NVIDIA is going to all-time highs whether you like it or you don't. Over the next five to 10 minutes, I'm gonna tell you exactly why I think that and also why I just entered the largest position I have entered this year. But first, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below whether you agree with me or you don't. Let me know what you think. First things first, we're looking at NVIDIA here. Now, NVIDIA has consolidated over the last 100-ish days, and that's caused a lot of people irreparable like hatred for this name. That There's no possible way NVIDIA can continue to break out. We have done nothing for the last 100 days. As a matter of fact, we have hit a series of lower highs, and therefore you have everybody and their grandmother screaming that NVIDIA is going to roll over and hit new lows. But let me go ahead and tell you something. NVIDIA is up, or at least the peak, almost 200%. That's like 180 to 185% on the year. Guys, I think a 100-day consolidation range after a near 200% move and a $3 trillion stock is merited. The market is consolidating. They are accumulating more. This does not have the traditional distribu uh, distribution fractal whatsoever. As a matter of fact, it looks like a bullish pennant. What do bullish pennants do in uptrends? They typically resolve to the upside. This is a continuation fractal if you're privy to technical analysis, just like this was in the middle of the year, right? Everybody wanted to short NVIDIA as it started to roll over into April. And next thing you know, it undercut a supply zone and ripped into new highs. What do you think is gonna happen this time as it suckers in more and more bears every higher low that comes in? People are expecting this to break down and it doesn't. It's eventually gonna squeeze everybody. And I'm telling you, it's going to get very, very bullish above 130. It's going to get incredibly difficult or damn near impossible to ignore above 140. And once this stock breaks above 140, what do you think the rest of the market is going to do? The S&P 500 is already at all-time highs. NASDAQ is slowly climbing back up. It's less than 5% away. If you think NVIDIA is going to break out to all-time highs, the Qs are going to break out into all-time highs, and obviously the S&P 500 is going to continue to break out in all-time highs as well, right? It's going to be a chain reaction. We have an upward sloping 200-day moving average showing us that the primary trend in NVIDIA is and has been up ever since it crossed back in Q1 of 2023. Feel free to short this at your own peril from a swing trading perspective. It is incredibly difficult to short primary uptrends, and yet people still want to do it because they're convinced the market is topped or whatever. I'm telling you right now, if you live by the rule of longing only above the 200 and shorting or cash only below the 200, you're going to live a less stressful life in the market and hopefully not blow a fucking account, right? If you look at the RSI, I will admit it's not the strongest bullish momentum starting, but the RSI is back up and over the 50, showing that off of this late Latest high or low, bulls are still in control of short-term momentum. We're looking for a continued break up towards the 70 area in RSI. I'm assuming it's going to be up there once we cross above 130. I am bold up in NVIDIA, but it doesn't stop with just a sting single stock idea, right? There's an entire process behind it. And let me show you something really quick. It all starts with the absolute performance of the semiconductor industry group as a whole. Once again, just a couple of weeks ago, everybody and their mother had a head and shoulders pattern drawn. They expected this to break down, maybe bounce a little bit, but then hit new lows. And it did. It found support exactly where it needed to at the 200-day moving average. It found support on the August 5th breakdown exactly where it needed to at the 200-day moving average. Guys, this is not bearish. If a any asset, doesn't matter if it's semiconductors, NVIDIA, the S&P 500, the Qs, anything, if it continually finds support in an upward sloping 200 day moving average, you can almost damn near buy that bounce every single time until it eventually fails and expect price to continue within the uptrend. This is a very simple way to differentiate between strong uptrends and potentially distribution phases, which everybody once again was expecting. It's not there, guys. The RSI is above 50. We have this upwards sloping 200 day moving average. And if SMH breaks above 250, 252. It's the same scenario as NVIDIA. All of a sudden, people are going to start going, uh-oh, maybe I need to buy semiconductors again. And then what do you think up and over 285 is going to happen? The Qs are going to be at all-time high. Semiconductors are going to continue to break out in all-time highs. And NVIDIA is going to be that flagship stock to own. We're going to go one step further. This is an absolute performance of semiconductors. 
held support where it needed to hold, showing you that maybe there's going to be a continued move to the upside. But when we look at it from a relative standpoint, so semiconductors against the broader market, it really stands out. A couple of weeks ago inside of TTI, we were looking at this specific relationship. And once again, this is a relationship. We're taking the semiconductor industry group and dividing it against the absolute performance of the S&P 500 to show which asset is stronger, the broader market, or semiconductors. And we would expect in a healthy uptrend uh, where semiconductors are leading, we would expect the line to go up and to the right. A couple of weeks ago through that summer volatility, we saw semiconductors get sold off on an absolute basis, which we just looked at, and on a relative basis, meaning they underperformed the broader market. We had to ask ourselves a couple of weeks ago, if we start breaking below this level, this is a potential head and shoulders, could we resolve to the underside? And what are the implications if that happens? Well, we said the implications of a semiconductor industry group rolling over against the broader market probably means the bull market's over. We would uh, be defensively shifting our cash. We'd be looking at potentially taking shorts, more than longs, et cetera. You don't get the leading industry group rolling over on a relative basis without following through on the absolute basis a couple of weeks later, which is what we were expecting. But it didn't happen. It bounced exactly where it needed to bounce, just where it found support the last time. So now we're faced with a, once again, a relative and an absolute argument. Do semiconductors dig in where they need to, which they have, and do they start outperforming the broader market on a relative basis as well? Because once again, we don't want to just own things going up. We want to own things going up more than everything else. And in a very healthy bull market where tech leads, semiconductors this cycle are the market leaders. So what we would expect is semiconductors do start outperforming, which they have since the beginning of September. It's only been three or four weeks now since they've really started to dig in and outperform. This needs to continue, but it opens up the possibility of all the other large cap, mega cap tech stocks outperforming specifically the semiconductors. Once again, we pointed out NVIDIA. I believe NVIDIA is going to be the trade to take through Q4, we are loaded up, right? We loaded up yesterday. We've had some positions in there for at least like the last five or six weeks that are actually free, right? We're targeting January, but it's not just NVIDIA. You know, a lot of the bearish influencers out there on YouTube and TikTok and Fintwit and the media are sitting there saying, well, NVIDIA is a loaded gun. You know, they have earnings, the problems, they're, they're, they're uh, you know, they have supplier issues, they're stuffing their numbers, all of this stuff. But tell me why, if it's such a big deal, Broadcom is sitting at all-time highs, basically. Tell me why TSM is sitting at all-time highs, basically. Tell me why Texas Instruments is sitting at damn near all-time highs. It's not just NVIDIA, but NVIDIA is the trade to take. So once again, I believe that NVIDIA is going to break out to all-time highs. We have like a 150, 160 price target by the end of the year that could prove to be conservative. I am loaded to the gills in a trade here. This will make my year if NVIDIA breaks out to all-time highs. And once again, think about the psychology of market participants. If NVIDIA does in fact break out of this pennant above 130 and specifically above 140 to all-time highs, everybody that has loaded a bunch of capital into shorting NVIDIA will be squeezed to the upside and everybody that's sitting on the sidelines, particularly the people sitting in money market funds right now that are moving cash from those as interest rate comes down back into stocks, they will be FOMOing in. So we will have a short squeeze plus FOMO. That is a perfect recipe for a breakout on high volatility, which is what we want to capture specifically through straight calls because right now we're trading in a lowered implied volatility environment. My name is Hamilton. I'm here at the Trading Initiative. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think about NVIDIA. And the worst part, if I'm wrong, I'm going to lose some money. You guys can talk shit, but I'm going to lose cash if this doesn't work. That's why I'm confident putting it out there. All right. Catch you in the next video.